So the, the question was about paste mixers. Right. And actually, so taking a jar of paste as you get it, and then mixing it in this mixer before you put it on the... Right. Okay. So we talked a little bit about shear thinning and recovery. So if you mix it up, you're going to shear thin it. By the time you get it to your st stencil, it's going to recover. <coughs> so in my opinion, it's really you're, you're kind of working it, decreasing the work life. Right? Because the paste is going to be, you know, there's a hysteresis curve so many times. A lot of times you'll open up a jar of paste and you'll see a little bit of a flux pool on top. It's a lower molecular weight, it'll tend to rise a little bit. You could just by hand just stir it back in. Don't recommend a metal blade to do that. I've seen the plastic kind of get turned into it as well. Uh, so that's the reason why people started having paste mixers. Um, your stencil and your process should do the shear thing. You shouldn't need an offline tool to do that. Uh, and in fact, it may end up reducing the work life. Any other questions? You said not to use uh, metal metal uh, knives for the uh, <coughs> shear thing. Yeah, the a lot of times people like a spatula, especially the ones that are points on the edges, right? Because then as you're in a jar, you could end up scrape, scraping some plastic, some plastic right. and then plastic. So there's plastic or the, if you do use the metal ones, they're Teflon coated ones or they're rounded, but plastic is the best so you don't end up scraping the plastic and then stirring that into the paste. I also have a question about just, uh, the squeegee size. Okay. We've got a couple of machines where the blade, we only have one set of blades for it. So they may be this much wider on each side of the, of the, the stencil print. Mm -hmm. Is there any problem? So the question was about can you be too, can you have your, your right. squeegee blade too, too long or too wide? The only really effect there is you're using more paste, okay. right? So from a paste supplier standpoint, <laughs> good job. Um, you know, <laughs> but you know, that's really the only effect is because you, you want to make sure you actually have enough paste across the whole across the whole front. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, you can maybe put in less paste, but you're gonna, what's going to happen is it's naturally going to roll out to the edges, right. and then you're going to be short in the middle where your board is. And so when you put your paste on to start your process, you want to put a bead all the way across. So really the only effect is the amount of paste that you're using. It's really not going to affect your deposits or your, your process. So the question was about if the apertures are on just on the interior of the board, do you want your blade to be just over the apertures or over the board itself? I mean, theoretically, you just want it over the apertures, but in practice, I think it's easier to be consistent by having it larger than the board, right? So because then if those apertures shift or move or something, I mean, you're really cutting the, you're narrowing your process window. So really what you want is, is the paste to roll and fill where those apertures are. So if you have a large area of the board that has no paste or no apertures or anything like that, you could get away with a squeegee that's smaller than the board, but still covers those apertures. But in practice, I would think that would tend to be, you know, the next rev comes in, and now this, you know, the board's a little bit more, the stencils are more over here, and that could be screwed. But the idea is to get the consistent pressure and speed and volume where you're printing. That's why you want that. So advantage of positive displacement in like a pump head, like a like those types of like a pro flow or um, really the particle size still comes into play because they still have to go through the apertures. Okay, um, really it's more about viscosity and rheology tweaks. Um, so for for us, I know we manufacture material for a pro flow pump head or a real pump. So you would have a separate case. We do. Yes, and it's not particle size, it's more about rheology. So it's more, especially in the real pump, or the, um, the pro flow, it's, it's you know, about a, it's a really delicate balance between it packing, going through those holes, but not hard settling, and a couple of things that happen there. So we do tweak the formulation, but more on the rheology and the particle loading. So instead of 87%, maybe 88%, but the particle size is less. You have a question? about solder masking over misregistering in some IC vendors, they want solder mask fine pads. Right. So in that case, you need to adjust your stencil thickness to get the right amount of paste on your pad. Yeah, what you have to look at as far as the, the mask over the pads, right. and solder mask to fine pads, right. how thick is that mask, right? I mean, the graphic I showed was pretty exaggerated, right. uh, you know, for the effect. So if it's a very small amount, 
and you know that going in, so you know that on those pads, your volume's gonna be slightly higher. Um, that's really what you gotta adjust for, right? So um, usually that's for solder mass defined pads, um, usually not so much for CSP or BGA, because I'll lead to solder joint cracking. Um, there's, an, there's other effects in reliability, right? Those are stress risers and things like that. So you usually see it on parts that have a little bit more flexibility. Do you know why they I do not. Because, you know, it's, you have one BJ says do this, and the other one says do Yeah, I did. Like I said, I mean, from a reliability standpoint, I know that there, there's been studies that shown the solder mass defined pads where the solder mass touches the bump. Does, those are crack propagation points. And so the cracks will start from there because of the CT mismatch and basically you're pushing stress right there. So I've seen that. Um, why they do that, I think, is for pad pullout. Okay. So I've seen more of that as you've gone to boards that are halogen free or uh, be, you know, BFR free and all that good stuff that we've got to do now. The pads aren't as robust in some cases. You put solder mask over them, and all of a sudden it's a lot harder to pull them out. So I've seen a few people do that from that. We've done drop testing and things like that for our underfills and other stuff. And our failure modes a lot of times are pad pull out. So we, we've done it in our internal test vehicle just to drive the failure mode somewhere else. Because all we're seeing is pad pull out, we're like, well, that doesn't tell us what we need to do. And so we've done it from a design. Now someone may do that for their design and say, well, we'll keep seeing this failure mode, but solder mask over the pads, so we'll stop that. Now they may end up accelerating something else down there. Any other questions?